Today, we're going to be counting down some of the most epic smartphone fails ever, starting off pretty bad, but ending up in complete disaster. Number 10 is the Galaxy Fold, for which all hell broke loose as Samsung's revolutionary smartphone started breaking before it had even reached consumers. There was later a teardown by iFixit, which showed a whole number of design vulnerabilities, like the gap in the screen bezel or the hinge when the phone is folded up, which would both give clear room for dirt to get trapped in. An even bigger issue, though, came from reviewers peeling off what looked like the embedded screen protector, but what was actually part of the display structure. Here's the thing, if a polymer film shouldn't be taken off a device, then it should be designed so that it can't be taken off the device. This is a solid 3 out of 10 fail right here, saved in part just because it was caught before the product actually reached consumers. The Facebook phone, also known as the HTC First, was the first phone in the world to use Facebook Home, a heavy software skin over Android. This was a mid-range phone built for the masses. Both Facebook and HTC thought that this could be huge. And credit where due, Facebook Home itself wasn't terrible. It was where the Facebook chat heads that you're probably used to now were actually introduced, and you could see all your Facebook notifications all over your lock screen. But it did so poorly that within a month of being on sale, AT&T dropped its on-contract price from $99 to $0.99. Cents. The main reason being that the whole thing was just a bit underwhelming. Whilst it was a fresh new look compared to stock Android, a lot of its features could be downloaded on other Android phones, which had, frankly speaking, better hardware. So this one's also getting a 3 out of 10. Number 8 is Virtu, which is a company founded by Nokia with the purpose of creating super premium phones. And by this, I don't mean $1,000 or even $2,000. I'm talking devices that went all the way up to $50,000. The idea behind Virtu was to market phones as fashion accessories, to kind of separate themselves from all these other smartphones that were competing on specifications, and to instead try to compete on materials and craftsmanship. They said that if people can pay $20,000 for a watch, then why not on a mobile phone? And to be clear, this in itself was not the problem. I actually think they had a pretty good point. The problem came because whilst these guys were out there hand-making smartphones, they were up against companies like Samsung with the ability to mass produce. And so Virtu was always behind the curve. By the time Virtu had released a phone, it was already a whole year behind in specs. And when people are spending 50K on a phone, having the latest components is a minimum requirement. It wasn't long before the company was seriously in debt and then had to be shut down. So I'm going to give this a 4 out of 10 fail rating. Pretty disastrous outcome, but at the same time it wasn't hugely surprising. Google's Project Aura was a truly exciting prospect. We're talking about a completely modular phone that people could customize based on their needs. Those on a budget could pick and choose the features that were important to them, like maybe a large battery, and enthusiasts could go all out and build the phone of their dreams. Plus, it would massively reduce the cost of upgrading. Instead of swapping your whole phone out, you could literally just swap the parts you wanted to change. And there's also an environmental benefit, as fewer devices would then be thrown away. So this kind of sounds amazing, but there were just too many problems with it. The main one boiling down to complexity. Imagine this, Google is offering people essentially a frame on top of which consumers can pick and choose the parts that they want. And that part's fine, but what if different consumers want different sized phones? Does Google then offer five different sizes of frames and then separate sized versions of every single component to go with them. You've also got to bear in mind that because this frame has got to be both future-proofed and at least able to support high-end components, if you were out there just trying to build a cheap phone, then chances are the body itself would end up costing just as much, if not more, as the rest of your components. So Project Aura is also getting a 4 out of 10. It's a pretty big fail, but at the same time, it started and ended as a dream. There was never really a final product announced. Number six is from Microsoft, who invested about two years and a billion dollars in what ended up becoming the Kin 1. The central concept here was Loop a home screen that collected all your different social media feeds into one place. The idea was decent, and to be fair, the phone was also hitting at a good time. It was right at the start of this social media revolution. But the problem was that it's almost comical how many features were missing. The feeds would only update once every 15 minutes, the phone had no app store, and you couldn't even use any messaging applications. Kind of ironic for a social media-centric phone. For a company like Microsoft to have taken this much of a misstep, and for it to have costed them so much, is a pretty big fail in my books, so that's a 5 out of 10. Let me tell you something that very rarely works. Companies that have nothing to do with smartphones suddenly jumping in and trying to build a flagship. The Red Hydrogen One is a shining example of this. It comes from a company that specializes in Hollywood cinema cameras. It started off as an exciting idea, with 
with an apparent holographic display and ultra high-end modular camera system. But it kind of feels like Red was so focused on trying to stand out that they kind of forgot why most phones are built the way they are. And so the Hydrogen One ended up being a polar opposite to all of them, and not in a good way. They completely skipped over the trends of having a vivid OLED display, anything close to slim bezels, or just generally having a pocketable phone that was reasonably sized in your hand. Add to this that the device was delayed twice due to manufacturing problems, and this was one messy situation. So six out of 10 for this one. Number four is the BlackBerry Storm from 2008. And we're talking about a device here that has been described as the worst smartphone ever. That's quite the title. And part of what makes this such a miserable failure is just how much there was going for it. The Storm boasted a lot of the same features of the iPhone that it was going up against, but with a clickable touchscreen display and the company's famously good messaging services. And yet, the experience on the phone was literally awful. It used pretty much the same operating system as the previous non-touchscreen BlackBerrys, and so it was nowhere near as polished as iOS that was made for this. Ironically, coming from BlackBerry, the typing sucked too. It was ruined by a combination of lag and only being able to touch one key at a time. So this one's getting a seven out of 10. In my opinion, definitely a key factor in the fall of BlackBerry. Number three, and you might be wondering how on earth can you get worse than the worst smartphone ever? Well, welcome to the Freedom 251, a smartphone by the company Ringing Bells, which went on sale in India for around $4. You read that right, $4, the price of a cup of coffee for many people. As you might've guessed then, this thing pretty much destroyed the internet for a bit, raking in almost 50 million pre-registrations in the first week. I'm pretty sure that's some sort of record, but how many of those 50 million actually ended up getting delivered? Well, from the reports, it's looking somewhere between 65,000 and 5,000. And then because the managing director wasn't fulfilling his orders, had declined to offer a refund, and more importantly, threatened to kill one of his customers, he was then arrested. But he's out again now, and he's trying to convince the government to subsidize the phone. What he's saying is that the whole of India would be better off if everyone had a freedom phone. And so the government should be covering some of the cost so that Indians can still buy it at an affordable price. The whole thing is an absolute mess. I'm giving this an eight out of 10. Next up is iPhone 6 Bendgate. And if you didn't know, essentially the iPhone 6 and especially the 6 Plus were just not as resistant to bending as they should have been. There was a particular point in the chassis on which if pressure was applied, the device would deform. On one hand, this was blown out of proportion as it only really affected people who A, didn't have a case and B, were pretty careless with their device. But on the other hand, it almost didn't matter. There was an issue and because everyone likes to make fun of Apple, what started off as a forum post on Mac rumors became a viral YouTube video, a joke from other brands and then just a straight up meme. It even resulted in Apple's share price falling. So this one is easily an eight out of 10 fail. But the reigning champion is still the Galaxy Note 7. If you didn't know, a number of battery issues led the Note 7s to be, let's say, more prone to exploding than they should have been. But that's not even the worst bit. Phones exploded, they were recalled, remanufactured, and then started exploding again. And even though this was a much easier mistake to make than what happened with the Freedom phone, which was pretty much fraud, Samsung has more to lose than ringing bells, and so the impact was larger. In one fell swoop, Samsung had done two things that no company ever wants to be caught doing, putting the customer at risk and making the same mistake twice. Now, actually, the two separate batches of Note 7s had different problems, but because they both had the same result, it wasn't really seen like that. Samsung lost trust, which is very hard to recover. And so I'm giving this one a prestigious nine out of 10 because it can always get worse. There are plenty of phones I didn't manage to get into this video, like the Amazon Fire Phone and the Samsung Galaxy Round, but nonetheless, I really hope you enjoyed it. And I've got a whole playlist on smartphone news like this, so I'm gonna link it as a card above. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.